First things I showed this morning was when you're experimenting with the blend mode and you want to just try out the try them out. You don't necessarily memorize what these things do all the time, but you want to try them out. The blend modes are of course at the top of the layers palette. The default blend mode's normal. And there's this long list of blend modes. Most of you don't really memorize what these are. You just kind of go through the menu and go, was it that one? Uh, no, was it that one? Uh, was it that one? And you're just trying them out, trying to see which one you like. When all you want to do is experiment, if you have your move tool selected, you can hit shift plus to cycle you through the blend modes in the list. So shift plus will go to the next blend mode. You can see them changing on the screen there. And then shift minus will go backwards. And that's just a real quick way to experiment to see which blend mode you think might work best for you. Every blend mode actually has its own keyboard shortcut as well. If you hold down shift and alt or shift and option on a Mac and type a letter, you'll get a blend mode. So most of them make sense. Like multiply is M, shift alt M or shift option M. O is overlay, S is screen. Every once in a while there's kind of a random one, but most of them make sense. Y for luminosity. You know, those are four common blend modes you use all the time. There's three blend modes that you gotta learn, and if you master these three, it'll really help you understand the rest of the blend modes in Photoshop. Those three are screen, multiply, and overlay. Screen ignores black and makes light stuff lighter. Multiply ignores white, so it's the opposite of screen, and it darkens things. Overlay is a combination of the two, so it ignores gray and makes stuff lighter and darker. So I've got these three squares, they're each on their own, they're on a layer there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the blend mode. The way blend modes work is they change the calculation between two pixel layers. They look at the top pixel, compares it with the pixels underneath, and changes the value of that pixel based on the parameters that you've, you're choosing here. If I choose screen, that black square is gonna disappear because screen ignores black. Nothing's gonna happen with the white square because it's already as white as it can be. Since it's at the top, it can't make anything brighter underneath it because it's already brighter than everything else. That gray square is gonna make everything lighter. So sure enough, I choose screen, black goes away, white stays the same, and that gray square made the underlying area lighter. If I change the blend mode to multiply, I'm gonna get the opposite of that. So the black square doesn't change, the white square disappears, and that gray square makes the underlying area darker. If I go to multi overlay, I get the mixture of the two, where it's the gray square that disappears, that black square makes the underlying area darker, that light square, again, nothing happens because it's already as bright as it can be, okay? So you're thinking, great, I, I know how to change squares. That's so useful. Let's figure out and see how we can use these blend modes in actual real life situations. Now this is something I didn't show earlier this morning. How many of you have mastered levels and curves? But it's kind of dry and geeky, right? It's not something you wanted to learn, it's something you had to learn, right? Because you have to use histograms and charts and graphs and points and all this stuff. I'm gonna show you a different way to do image correction. Not saying it's the right way or the preferred way, but to reinforce what blend modes are all about. So you know you're Photoshop geek when you start talking to the image and expecting it to talk back. Or when you're looking through a viewfinder and you're, just, you're, you're actually telling yourself, I'm just gonna Photoshop that, right? Well, tell me what's wrong with this image. What's wrong with the foreground? It's too dark. What's wrong with the background, the, fo the back there? It's too light, it's too washed out. Well, great, you've just learned everything you need to know on how to fix this image using blend modes. What blend mode makes dark stuff lighter? Screen. What blend mode will make the light stuff darker? Multiply, right? So if I duplicate this layer, Command-J, I've got a copy there. But a slight tangent, we learned earlier today that what's the make better key in Photoshop? It's the option key or the alt key, right? So rather than just calling this before copy, I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna add option or alt to my favorite shortcuts, command option J, and I'm gonna name this screen. And now I'm literally gonna change the blend mode of that layer to screen. And what happened to the foreground? It got lighter, okay? Now it blew out the background, so that's a problem, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a layer mask on that layer We'll add the add layer mask button. And then I'm gonna use the biggest paintbrush in Photoshop. It's called the gradient tool. I'm gonna type a G for the gradient tool. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the tool. I'm gonna right click on the tools to reset all tools. And I'm gonna drag a gradient 
during this natural transition zone here, let me try that again, black to white, foreground to background, and I'll drag out a gradient from there to there, and you see I've just covered up that correction on the background area. And again, on a, on a layer mask, black protects, white selects, or black hides, white reveals, whatever. So wherever it's black, it's not showing that effect of that screen adjustment uh, with the blend mode. Wherever it's white, it is changing it. Okay, so I've fixed the foreground. Now I want to fix the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer again. Command option J, I'm going to name it multiply. Now it's still got that screen blend mode on it, so it just doubled up the effect, right? So I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. Now what's wrong? The mask is in the wrong area. So what do I need to do to the layer mask? I click on it and I invert it. Command I, Control I. Now I fix the background, okay? Now a good colleague of ours who recently passed away, his name was Bruce Frazier. Many of you know his name, terrific author. He actually figured out that there's a relationship between opacity of a layer set to screen and multiply and an f-stop on a camera, an approximate. And it turns out about 33% equals about one f-stop. So if I go back to the foreground, the screen layer, this is essentially three f-stops lighter because it's at 100%. If I get my move tool, I press V for the move tool, and I type 3-3 three, three in my keyboard, I've just changed the opacity of that layer to 33%. So now it's the equivalent of one f-stop. If I want two f-stops, what do I do? 6-6. Six, six. If I want three f-stops back to 100%, I type 0 for 100%. What if I want four stops? Can I go above 100%? Sure, I can duplicate the layer and type 3-3, three, three, right? Because these are additive. The blend modes just composite back down through the stack, so you can add them up. So if that back of the foreground is too light, we fix that. If the background is too dark and I want to lighten it in terms of f-stops, what do I do to that layer? Try a lower opacity. Let's try 66. And now it's two f-stops darker. Three, three. It's one f-stop darker. So this is just a different way to do image correction. Again, not reinforcing that this is the right way. But I'm trying to reinforce what blend modes are all about. Thank <laughs> you.